Pull your tush out from underneath you so that the true base of your pelvis, the perineum, is angled straight down through the block into the earth. And if you even feel your pelvic bowl, it's ever so slightly tipped forward. So when you're right on top of your sits bones and your perineum is drawn straight down, your pelvis is ever so slightly tilted forward. So you have this lovely curve through your lower back. And that's mirrored up through your neck as well. And you want to feel your heart centered truly between the back and the front body. So the heart isn't sitting back here. It's also not, you know, expanding too far forward here. It's really right in the center on your central spin. So feel that nice lift from the perineum through the heart center, through the center of the palate, the crown of the head, all the way up. So you're connected to earth and sky. Physical to spiritual and everything in between. Settle your shoulders down your back. Broaden across your chest. This long lifted posture. Start to breathe more deeply from your abdomen, really even from your pelvis. As you inhale, expand, fill up through all sides. Exhale to contract, all sides in, down to the bottom. Inhale, feel that energy rising with prana. And exhale, feel that energy falling. Up and up. Inhale as that effort up, fire. Exhale down with grace. Let it rain like water. Imagine with your inhale from your left side, a dawn rising to the pinnacle at the top, summer ripened. Exhale to dusk over to the right, the way to the bottom. Winter. Cycle back through. Longitudinally, latitudinally, just breathe with these wraps of rapture. Continue to traverse the interior with your imagination as you breathe, as you sit. to the left shoulder, left hip up to the right shoulder, right shoulder to the upper outer left eye, left shoulder to the upper outer right eye. Where all those X's mark the spot in the center is your spit around which you breathe. Organize yourself through every posture. Bring your hands to your heart. And if you could just hold one word, one phrase, one mantra here between your hands close to your heart, what would it be? Tone the energy that you'd like to set for this week, this month, this time ahead of us. This time of a new normal, of challenge. Also, this time of greater turning inward, slowing down, focusing on the simple joys, the simple connections. Anything 
anything else you want to focus on encapsulated in that one word, mantra, affirmation, or phrase. A couple more deep breaths to seal it into your heart space. Let that vibration, that energy of the word, the phrase permeate your whole being. To support you and your purpose on the mat today. Gently bow your head. Inhale, reach your prayer straight up. Exhale, bend your elbows out to the sides like a cactus. Inhale, extend, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, prayer to your heart center. Inhale, shoot the prayer up. Think you're going to pop the cork. Exhale, open the elbows out. Inhale, lengthen, lift from your waistline up through your fingertips. Exhale, hands to the heart. One more set like that. Inhale, reach, extend, lift. Exhale, elbows wide. Inhale, lengthen. And exhale, hands to the heart. And keeping your hips on the clock. So right at three, left at nine, your pubis going forward to 12, your coccyx at six. Keep that and twist your spine to the right. See how far you can go without taking your left hip off the clock. Inhale to center. Use your core muscles, your back muscles, to rotate your spine to the left. Keep your right hip plugged down at 3 o'clock. Feel your weight right on top of the sits bones, shoulder blades in their sockets in the back. Third eye above the navel. Inhale, center. This time, reach the prayer up. Exhale, fan your arms out as you twist to the right. Bring it down to make contact with yourself or to the mat behind you with your right hand. Inhale, unwind, reach. And exhale, fan the arms out and down as you rotate the spine left. Your skull right on top. Inhale, unwind, reach. So a couple more sets to twist on the exhale. Inhale, back to the center, extend the arms. Exhale, to the left. One more set. Just follow your breath, it's your guide. It's your source to being embodied, staying connected. As you practice on your mat today. Exhale, bring your hands to the hearts. Come off of your block or any problems that you have under your pelvis. Sit right onto your butt with the soles of your feet together in a bound angle. And hold your ankles. And you can re-move that flesh again of your tush out from underneath you so that you can really feel like you're still right on top of your perineum, that base of the pelvis. And then press your inner heel, your outer heel together, your big toe ball mount, your pinky toe ball mount together. Feel that connection of your feet pressing in toward one another. And a 
as you inhale, open up across your heart center. Tilt your chin up a bit so you can surrender your head back in space a bit. Big inhale. Exhale, start to come forward and down like you're about to fold. And then at the very bottom of it, start to roll up your spine. So there you are at the pinnacle, summer ripening. Inhale. And to exhale, autumn falling. Empty, winter. Inhale, roll up. There's that spring into summer. And exhale, fall into winter. As you stretch your hips, your inner thighs here in Baddha Konasana, you're working this rolling wave-like motion in the spine. It's pretty similar to cat-cow. A few more rounds, leading with the breath. One more round for good measure. And then sit up nice and tall. Take the full breath. Bring your knees up. Take your feet flat. Hold your hands to the backs of your thighs. And pull your chest forward and up. So again, you're right on top of the sits bones. Lots of length from the waistline and up through the sides of the neck. Options for you from here. You can stay like this, using the strength of your core and your back to sit really tall, staying perched on top of the sits bones. You can then also invite your heels to lift up so you really just feel the balls of your feet or maybe even just the tips of your toes on the mat. This can also transfer hands back behind you on the mat. Stay broad through the chest and we'll let your chest cave in. Keep it expansive and lifted. Or you can come in for your full balance in the boat. Shins up. And your hands can continue to support you behind you or at the thighs. Or you can find an extension of the arms. Keep lifting out of your low back. Imagine that there's a string attached to your heart that's pulling forward and up. Three more breaths. Big inhale. Exhale. Place the feet on the mat. Take your two fists together. Center of the inner arches, so just so you know that your hips width distance there between your feet. And then line your knees up in that same dimension. Travel your hands back behind you, fingertips angle forward. Now before you press into your hands to lift up or tabletop, cross-reference the weight from the inner wrist to the base knuckles of the pinky and the fourth fingers, and then the outer wrist to the thumb and the index. Center the wrist to that middle finger base knuckle joint. Inhale, press through your hands and your feet, and lift into upward tabletop. So protecting the neck, keep your gaze a little bit more forward and up. If it feels fine for you to let your gaze draw more straight above you or even back behind you, you can explore that. Inner rotate the thighs. Press into all those cross-reference points in your hands. For another two. And gently release. 
Same thing, one more set. So you might keep your hands back there on the mat, or you can opt to take the thighs as you come into Navasana. Or extend your arms to open full balance. Use your core and your back strength to stay lifted from your waistline up as you draw your knees into your chest. Extend through your toes, fingertips. Lift the corners of your mouth because I know you're loving this right now. For three. And on one, prep it for the upward tabletop. You can always do your measure once again. Welcome to just measure repeatedly all throughout the practice. Inhale, lift. So just like you cross-reference the weight in your hands, you can do the same thing in your feet. Big toe ball mount to the outer heel. Pinky toe ball mount to the inner heel. Notice how that really helps maintain the inner rotation in your thighs. From the center of the heel to those middle toe joints, the base knuckles, the toes insert into the foot. That's where you want to really feel the press. So your fingertips, your toe tips don't have to grip the mat. They can stay a little softer. For another two full breaths. And release. Cross your ankles, shift your weight forward onto your hands and your knees. So again, hips width between the knees. You know that measurement, two fists. For the hands, turn it in and meet the tips of the middle fingers. Shoulder width. Put it on the inner wrist points of the fingertips, angle forward. Take a full breath. Tuck the toes. Inhale, hover your knees just about an inch or so off the mat. It's like a hovering tabletop. Imagine that you could press your heels back into a wall, flush with the balls of the feet. Then anchor into the hands. Fill out that space of your lower back, your core. Broaden your collarbones. Lengthen the sides of the neck. Do you still have a nice right angle at your wrists, at your hips, at your knees? One more breath. Start to extend your legs, walk your feet a bit back so you can lift your hips up to down dog. And then just move it around as much as you like. Explore your space. Settling into a more actively still dog as you're ready. Soft knees, soft elbows. You have more of a visual bend in your knees than you do in your elbows. Either way, you can feel that both joints have some spaciousness, so energy can flow through the joints. And also that so you can be really strong in your musculature below and above the joints. Stabilize your dog so you can get the tail up. That's the pinnacle. Rotate the armpits into the heart center. The inner thighs back. Feel the weight. Balls of the feet, balls of the hands. Heart center between the back and the front. Whatever your word or your mantra, your phrase that you chose here in the beginning of class, put it into your dog. However that resonates, whatever that means for you, just put those qualities into your dog. Maybe it's just an accepting of however you feel in the moment. Maybe it's a patience with your body, with your mind. Maybe it's a supercharge that muscle energy so you can really move stale energy out of your body. 
your breath. A few more cycles. Inhale, forward to plank pose. You should really be able to prove the length of your dog, of your plank, just going one into the other. Shoulders over wrists for plank. Exhale, push the hips up and back for dog. Inhale, forward. Exhale, back. About three more times on your own. Keep pressing your heels back in the plank. So rather than being on the tips of your toes, less access to your lower body strength, can you press into the ball mounds of the feet? Feel the engagement of your legs. Next time you're in plank, hold it. And put your hips on the clock. Cock six back into six. Cue this forward to 12. Cross-reference the weight in your hands. Almost feels like you could press down and apart, like you're stretching the mat in half lengthwise. A few more breaths. You're always welcome to modify this. Knees down. Keep the plank position. And then lower your knees under your hips for tabletop. Inhale, sweep your right arm all the way up. Exhale, thread the needle, send it all the way through. And invite your left arm forward, a little bit over to the right as well. Like you can really spider crawl those fingertips. And that gives you more opening, more room to twist from your mid, upper back, your neck, your gaze. Keep your hips on the clock. Find your breath at the base of every exhale. You're really toning that pelvic floor, those lower abdominals in and up. Remember that that heat is always rising where you generate it in the house of your body. The furnace, the base of the pelvis. The water of your breath is helping to cool down the overheating. But you don't want it to get too damp and flooded, so just keep that engagement, that fire energy of tone and lift from your pelvic floor up. Balance it with that nice soft quality of your breath. Exhaling, rain water down to the earth. Bring your left hand back to frame your face. Inhale as you rewind it and come on up. Bend your right elbow and cradle the back of the head with your right hand. Traction your neck and your skull back. And see so if you can bring your right arm close to the side of your head. So your chin's coming to your armpit. Now wrap the bottom left shoulder head back, blade behind the heart. Pull your head back with your right hand. One more breath. Inhale, release. Inhale, left arm up. So you're feeling a nice open twist. Nice side body stretch here as well. Exhale, thread it through. Reach your right arm hand forward up into the left a bit as you twist. You can even imagine if I was with you to assist you in this posture, I would use my thighs to clamp your hips into the center, onto the clock, so that you're really lengthening and twisting from a stable, centered base, which is your pelvis, your thigh bones, 
even down through your shins and your feet into the mat. Deep belly breaths. A couple more, slow and steady. Inhale and unwind. Bring your face to your right hand, left arm up. Bend the elbow and cradle the back of your skull. Lengthen the top of your neck so you're literally pulling back. You're finding a nice traction. So you should feel a big side body stretch there, as well as the action of your twist. Take your chin to your armpit. And breathe into the side of that left lung. Feel that rinse of your right kidney at your lower back. One more breath. And release. Come up onto your feet to standing forward bend. You know the measurement. Find your hip width. Soften your knees so your belly comes to your thighs. Hang your body. Feel free to use blocks. Hands to the mat, or even gently holding the backs of your legs is another good option. Just like you felt that action in your plank through your hands pressing down and isometrically engaging outward, same thing in your feet. The hands and the feet, so related in so many ways. Press down and out. And notice that you feel your butt muscles turning on a little more. Your sits bones widening so you get a little more room in your body to tilt your pelvis. Hang your spine and head. Keep your throat open so no need to jam the chin to the chest. Even rather than gazing straight back behind you, you might be gazing a little bit more down and forward a bit. That lovely little bit of extension and curve in your neck. So all these cues, of course, you're welcome to just feel them out, tailor them for what you need today. Inhale, extend the spine forward to half lift. Accelerate more weight into the balls of the feet. Exhale, bend forward. Two more times, inhale, half lift, lengthen, extend, broaden the collarbones, draw the ribs in slightly as you open the heart, and exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift, one more time, and exhale, fold. Take your hands to your hips to inhale, lengthen forward and rise all the way up. Mountain pose. Pelvic bowl right underneath you, nice and neutral. Again, you can feel your right hip at three, your left hip at nine. Your pubic bone's going forward, 12, coccyx back to six. Rest your hands, open your heart, breathe into the tops of your lungs. To that architecture of your house your body, where you live, where you practice, who you are. That one word, mantra, phrase that you're holding sacred with you today. Bring your hands together at your heart. Repeat it to yourself internally. Inhale, reach the prayer up, so just like we did seated in the very beginning. Exhale, elbows out to the sides like a cactus. Inhale, extend up. Exhale, prayer to the heart. 
Two more rounds. Inhale, prayer up. Exhale, cactus the arms out. Keep your neutral pelvic bowl. Inhale, extend. Exhale, to the heart. One more time. Follow your breath. Inhale, prayer up. Exhale, cactus the arms. Now keep your left hip back at nine. Twist your spine up to the right. Shoulder blades in their sockets behind the heart. Third eye above the navel. Chest broad. Inner thighs back. Inhale, unwind, reach up. Exhale, same thing, elbows out. So you find your cactus arms first, and then you twist, keeping your right hip at three o'clock. Third eye above your navel. Legs strong. Breath flowing. One more, full cycle. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, take your arms down and back behind you to interlace the fingers. Or you can use a towel or a strap if you have one. Inhale, lift your sternum, lengthen your tail down and back, six o'clock. And then origami fold at your hip joints to come all the way down, arms over. Keep that active energy going in the roots of your body. From your inner right heel up to your left sit bone. Your inner left heel up to your right sit bone. There's another X you can draw with your imagination. Lengthen and widen it. And more weight into the balls of the feet. Soften the knees a bit. Take two more inhales and exhales. Release, inhale, half lift, lengthen the spine. Exhale your left leg back to a lunge. Right foot in the front. Stack the knee over the ankle. Take your right hand, flip the wrist, and just to measure and line it up, place your right wrist on the outside of your right heel. And make sure that you are being fairly precise with that. So it's wrist to the heel. And then the forearm, the elbow, the upper arm line up really nicely with that shin from the heel to the knee. And once you have that, come back to frame your front foot with your hands with your blocks and send some energy back through your left heel up from the inner thigh. Continue to accelerate forward into the ball of your front right foot and tap your outer right hip back. Still on that clock. Holding you to your center. Helping you to work your whole sphere 360 degrees all the way around. Broaden the collarbones, lengthen the sides of the neck. And take two more breaths. So you get a little lighter on your hands, a little denser, heavier in the legs. That earth energy. Bring your back foot just a pinch up so your stance isn't too long. Inhale, lengthen through your front leg. You're still bent at your hip joints. That's the origami crease. This forward fold, pyramid style. Exhale, re-lunge into your knee. So we'll make it dynamic and pulse. Inhale, hips up. Bend forward, softening belly to thigh. And exhale to lunge. Stack the knee over the ankle. Take three more on your own, pulsing with the breath. Make a nice little hover of your back heel off the mat as you lift the hips, fold forward. And then it comes a bit higher, right over the ball of the foot in the lunge. Round your 
back knee. Release the top of your back foot to the mat. Inhale, reach the arms all the way up. Press out of the roots of your front foot while you continue to accelerate forward into what's ahead. Keep the heart centered. So you're not existing in your past or in your future, but right here in your present. And then some options for play for fun. You can float that front heel up. You can hold opposite elbows overhead. Get a nice extra lift of the lungs and the ribs off the hips. Up, over, and back. Find your breath. Let it support you to get further embodied. Moment to moment in the posture. Another three. Inhale, ground your right heel, reach your arms up. Exhale, bring it down. Step forward to the top of the mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold forward. Step your right leg back, lunge. Left knee over ankle. So again, you'll flip left wrist, measure it out, line it up. It's always comforting to know that you fit yourself. It's just a nice way to prove that, show that. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Organize yourself around that central spit. Can you feel the connection of your outer left hip to your right sit bone, your outer right hip to your left sit bone? Get a little lighter in the hands. We're stacked in the front knees. The right heel presses back. The inner right thigh rotates upwards. Whenever so slightly shorten the stance, so you can inhale, hips up, fold over your front leg. Keep that connection of belly to thigh. It's okay if you keep some of a bend in that front knee. And exhale, lunge. Four more times. Inhale, pulse up to the pyramid variation. Exhale, low lunge, keeping your back knee lifted. Three more. Last time. Round your back knee, top of the back foot, inhale, reach it up, Anjani Asana. You have your options, your elements to add on for some extra curiosity, inquiry, play. Take opposite elbows, lift it up, this is like your window frame. Any time that you want to release some extra heat, it's really helpful to open the windows of the house there in the chest. You can also make sure that you're really accelerating forward into the ball of your front foot by lifting the heel like you're putting on a high heel shoe. Always moving forward. Just like the breath, spin of the planet, like time. A few more cycles. Open that heart for one more breath. Ground the heel, inhale, arms up. Exhale, place it down. This time, come into your plank posture. Your shoulders over your wrists. Remember your measurement. It's 
always helpful to time and time again go back to it because our subconscious patterns and habits are very strong. So the measuring tools are very helpful to help us overcome that. Hold us accountable to the archetypes we form. Knees grounded is an option, remember. Modify or extended full high plank. Keep your chest open, even as you push down and spread your shoulder blades apart, there's a little melting through the heart. Take your time. Exhale, lower the plank of wood to the earth, elbows drop back. Stretch your toes back. Keep hips width in the feet. Tail back to six, pubis bone forward and down into the mat to 12. Inhale, lift up, cobra. You can keep it small to start so that your hands can draw back behind you. Palms downward. And use that contact there to boost your chest up a little higher. Inhale, lift your legs up. Spread the toes out. Stay long through the back of the neck. Feel your glutes toning. It's one of the primary ways that you're really lifting and extending through your hips. As well as your hamstring and your back strength, helping you lift your legs, lift your heart. Now lift your hands. Keep the airplane wings or clasp with your opposite thumb on the outside. A little extra boost up, a few more breaths. A little sun smile on your face. And exhale to release. Bring your hands into the sides of your chest, round your knees so you can press back to a child's pose. Inhale, rock it forward and return to downward dog. Walk your hands back to your feet. Take any more at the back of the mat. To inhale, half lift, extend. Exhale to bend forward. And inhale, sit into chair. Take your arms forward. And then squeeze your hands into fists. You can keep it here or take it all the way up. Fists overhead. Wrap your armpits into your heart. Keep sitting. A little more weight into the balls of the feet because remember, you're going forward in time. Forward in space, forward with the breath. Integrating lessons of the past but not getting stuck. Keep squeezing through that energy in your hands. Two more breaths. Inhale, stand up, reach up, lift your heart at the top. Keep some suppleness through your knee joints so you're not locked out. Exhale, sit again, send your arms back like airplane wings, flush with shoulders. And then just the arms to inhale forward again, or up, hands to fists. I'm going to do about 30 rounds of Kapalabhati Pranayam, breath of the shining skull. Short snap of the belly and force the exhale out through the nose. Whenever you're ready, you're welcome to start. Big inhale first. And go. Hold it through the 
exhale. Inhale, stand up. Feel that inner fire. Let it rise up the central shoot out the top of your head. Chin me. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart center and fold forward. Inhale to a half lift. And then exhale, walk your hands forward to come into downward dog. You're going to give yourself a few breaths there. Just to reset, recommit. Awesome. Just checking in on you all. You're always free to write me a little comment as needed. And then here, inhale, send your right leg up to three-legged dog. Toes flex down, hips remain on the clock. Bend the right knee and exhale, roll the hip open. Imagine you're trying to tap that wall to your left with your big right toe while keeping the center of your left kneecap angled straight ahead. Peer toward that left wall underneath your upper left arm. Inhale back to three-legged dog. Exhale, bring it through to a lunge. Ground your back foot down. Say to about 45 to 60 degrees or so. And when you take a look at your feet, you should still have a nice hip width distance there between the heels. So it's like your heels are on two railroad tracks. Now, flip your right wrist. We already did this on the outside of the heel for the lunge. So similarly here, we do it just on the inside of the heel. So this could be where you stay right here. You're keeping that left hip spin down into its own lane on the mat. So again, through three and nine o'clock on the pelvis, the sides of the hips. Or you can come a little bit further back with your right hand in the center of the mat. And then you'll let that right shoulder come a little down and then press the front knee into it. So make that contact at your center line. Roll your outer left hip down and spin your inner left thigh back. And then keeping all of that intact through your lower half, through your front shin, knee, and shoulder, start to open up left side of the waist, ribs, chest, shoulder, neck, gaze. Then you can take this hand to sacrum or half bind, or you can inhale and extend your left arm over. Remember when we cross-reference the points in the hands? Do that here in your right hand on the mat. And then keep pressing that front knee into the shoulder as you spin the outer left hip down and open your heart up. So you should feel a lot of opposing actions going on here in your body. It's very dynamic. So support that with your breathing. Cross-reference the weight in your feet as well. Feel that rinse of your right kidney, that opening of your left lung. Let's take two more. And very gently release to come out. Lift your back heel up. And you can definitely incorporate your blocks here again. Inhale, shift forward or step your front foot back. You don't have as much room in front of you. And lift your back leg up. Keep a nice little bit of a bend into that right knee so you can accelerate the weight forward into the ball of the foot. And roll the outer left hip down to its nine o'clock position so you can feel your inner thigh rotating upward. Big inhale. Exhale, bend towards standing splits. And keep your gaze a little bit more down and just slightly forward rather than in, chin to chest. So you have some options. You can stay here. You can take your hands toward the earth. You can even take right hand or both hands to the back of that lower shin or ankle. Make some contact with yourself to deepen in. You feel so inspired to 
rock a kick up in the handstand today. Plant your palms. Measure out the shoulder width. And then bend even more into your standing right knee so you can first just lift the heel and feel that kicking action of your top left leg to bring you up handstand. Shoulders over wrists. And whenever you're ready, back to standing forward fold. You'll have another opportunity to play with that handstand on the other side. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, reverse swan dive up. Let's find a little flush. Exhale, bend the elbows out to the sides. And now tilt your elbows forward, fingertips back, and open your heart. Instagram, I'm about to lose you. So I'm going to restart it, okay? And then you can join back in. Okay, if you're still standing in your heart opener, awesome work. And inhale, reach the arms up. And then exhale back into your mountain. Okay. Inhale, sweep the arms skyward. And exhale, fold. Inhale to half lift. Exhale, make your way to plank pose. Exhale, lower slowly to your belly. Take your time. Make sure the form is good. It's much more important than speed or depth. Inhale, cobra pose. And then send your hands back again. This time, let's flip it. Tops of the hands to the mat, so toenail side or uh, fingernail side down. You've got your toenails down too. Inhale, lift the legs. Feel that connection. Pubis down and forward. Belly strong. Hands press into the earth as the inner thighs roll up and the whole spine lengthens. Send your toes back. One more full breath. And release. Press into a quick child's pose so you can reconnect with your breath. And return to downward dog. Inhale, lift the left leg. Bend the knee, roll the hip open. Without twisting the right side of your body, just open up the left. And inhale, re-extend it. Exhale, step through lunge. So we're coming back into that side angle pose. Back foot widens a little bit over to the right. Then you're about 45 to 60 degrees. Flip your left wrist on the inside of your left heel. Make sure you've got a nice little bend there from the elbow. It's like a little mini baseball net. Ready to catch ball. Right hip spins down into its own lane on the mat. So you can come from here or you can invite that bottom hand a little further down the mat. So that's just going to enable you to solidify that connection of your front knee into your shoulder. Press it in, taking you on the spit, revolve around the spit to open up to the right. You can take your bind if you like, it's a little more opening for the chest and the shoulders, or get more into the side body, open up the lats, by extending that right arm and you rinse your left kidney. 
Spin your inner right thigh down and back. Press your front knee into the shoulder. And breathe. Right armpit into the heart. Keep accelerating your weight forward on your front foot as your outer right heel grounds down, keeping you steady. One more breath. And release. Jump into a lunge so you can inhale your weight onto your front foot. Either you launch forward, you can just step that left foot back a little bit so you've got room on your mat. Lift your back leg up. Bend into your left knee so you can really feel the big left toe ball mount anchored. Cross reference it to the outer heel, pinky toe to the inner heel, center of the heel, forward to those middle toe, base joints. And then exhale. Start to bend even more from your hips. Exploring standing splits. So it could be that you just stay here or take it to the mat or make contact with yourself. The lower part of your left shin, ankle. Or try your handstand again. And if you have a wall nearby, you could totally rock this to a wall. If you want a little more support, bend your standing left knee even more. Lift the heel up. Anchor your hands down into the mat and kick up with your right leg many kicks you need. Find your breath. A few more. Fingers. 
One more step. Right and left. And next time you come to the right, hold it, knee to navel and plank. Using the strength of your hip to work out a rotation, take your right foot over to the left, your right knee toward your right elbow, and then place it onto the mat. And so whatever that active range you can work yourself into from the plank is really where you want to stay in the pigeon. Make sure your left leg straight back behind you, hold the mat in line with the hip, and then use your hands and your blocks from the mat to the sides of your hips to engage in and lift up. So this part's really important, really to prep for the forward bending aspect of this pose. Retain the squeeze in from your knees on the diagonal to the perineum all the way up as you come forward into your fold. So half pigeon is not so much your opportunity to um, check out and let all of your muscles go. You're really still engaged, still hugging to that center line of strength. Incorporate any props you might need. Clockwise spin of your sits bones. Firm root at the top of the left foot. Breathe into the tops of the lungs. Press yourself up, roll to your right hip, and bring your back left leg forward. And then you might want to just rearrange that right leg a little bit. So it's kind of more like heel into the perineum, knee out to the side. Feel yourself right atop your sits bones. And then with your left leg available, hold on wherever it's accessible, or if you have a strap, you can always loop the strap around the ball of the foot. And then sit up and extend forward through your left heel. Now it's perfectly fine if it doesn't get 100% straight. I would rather you be right here with a really long spine than here and collapsed into your lower back, right? So think of like kind of like those same down dog principles. Soft juiciness in the bend of the knee so that the low spine stay really nice and long. And then you're also really protecting your hamstring insertion points, your lower back, and you keep that nice lift out of your waist. Your body likes to have space. Use our strength to maintain that space. So again, you can stay here, or you can take your right hand over the top, you can hold the outer shin, ankle, or foot. And then inhale, circle your left arm up and back. Dancing Shiva pose, seated. Breathe for another three. Just notice when you look forward, is your left leg still in the left lane? Or has it crossed over to the right? Keep it in the left. Inhale, unwind. Hold your thighs and add both legs forward into a bow pose. Just since we're here, let's find it once again and notice the difference. Compared to the beginning of class, you're feeling maybe a little more creaky. Perhaps there's openness now here in the backs of the legs that you can fully extend. 
Maybe you can exhale, lower, hover for a little extra fire. Balance out this rainy weather. Place where we are here in California. Two more. Exhale, inhale. Cross an ankle over. Rock your weight to your hands. Shift it back. Plank to exhale, dog. Same method to get in on the left side. So we'll just go right from the knee to navel position. Inhale it forward. And then use the active strength of your left hip to rotate the knee toward the elbow. Place the shin and foot down on the diagonal. Right leg straight back behind the right hip. And just so you know, you're not a flat puddle who's lost all its volume. Rise up. Keep your open heart and all your forward folds. You have this element of backward bend. So it's really just the extension of the spine forward. Breath across the chest so you can take quality breaths. Notice the similarity of those words, right? Breath, width, breath. You can breathe better. Keep that space open. Add in any props you like. Can you embody your intention, your affirmation, your mantra right here, right now? Even if it's not visible to the naked eye, maybe you can just really embody it in your mind. Thoughts, stories that you're really gripping onto that you can release right now. Give yourself that permission. Feeling distracted. Go into your breath. The sensations in your body. Just know that we're rounding it to home base. So you can see it through all the way to the end. On a full cycle. Your practice. Counterclockwise spiral the sits bones. You've got a few more breaths. Right leg 
legs still on that right leg. Low back, still nice and lifted. Inhale, unwind. And then bring this in. We're not going to do boat again. Thank goodness. Take a seat if you want to prop yourself up onto a block. You feel free. Or a sofa cushion. Or a blanket, whatever you got. So we're just going to close with a few cycles of Nadi Shodhana Pranayama. Alternate nostril breath. Create a final clearing and a balance of energy flow through the energy channels, the little streams, the nadis, the body. So you can really use either hand to start. But you'll use your thumb on the right hand to close off your right nostril, or if you're left handed, you use your right pinky finger. Inhale through the left nostril. Pinch it off at the top and retain the breath. Exhale out through the right. Inhale up through the right. Retain it at the top. To exhale out through the left. Thank you one full cycle. So do couples a few more. Guide yourself through this rhythmically. Hold it as long as you can. That feels good at the top. Relax the space between your eyebrows. Travels through your left side. To complete it, relax the hand. Get a few more breaths here, seated. Just what you feel. Present in this moment, centered in the house of your body, your sanctuary, inner and outer. Off your seat to lie on your back. You can take any other pose you might need this afternoon for yourself. That does make about a 75 minute practice today. So I'm wishing you a lovely final resting posture. I'm going to leave it to you to do on your own and to guide yourself out whenever you feel it's sufficient. You're ready to re enter the world.